In this video, I want to show you a few really cool and useful resolve functions that I've set up as keybinds for myself, which I've been using over the past few months to make my editing workflow a lot faster. Some of these are going to help with things like playback smoothness while you're editing your videos, and others are just for convenience and staying organized. And there's one thing in particular that I want to show you that I don't think a lot of people know about, but they should because it's insanely useful. We're going to start off with something that should help you a lot if you run into issues with choppy playback while you're editing your videos, and that is timeline proxy resolution. This is essentially a function that allows you to change the resolution of what you're seeing on the preview monitor without having to change the resolution of the timeline or the footage. Normally, you would do this by going up to the playback menu at the top, then to timeline proxy resolution, and you can switch it to any of the options. I personally only use full and quarter. As you can see, I've also set these up as keybinds so that I can switch faster without having to go to the menu every time. To do that, you can go to your keyboard customization panel and look for timeline proxy resolution. There should only be one drop down list that you can click on and that's what you're looking for. Then just set up keybinds for whichever of these you plan on using. And like I said, I personally only switch between full and quarter, but feel free to set up keys for all of them if you need to. And now anytime when you're deep into an edit and playback is starting to slow down, you can just use these binds to swap between the different settings and get a few extra frames back. The second set of keybinds we're talking about is also for a function that helps with slow playback, and it's actually something that you can use in combination with the previous one. What I'm talking about is enabling and disabling footage proxies. And just a quick explanation for those of you who don't know what those are. Proxies are basically lower quality versions of the original clips that you're going to be working with, and they're pretty much meant exactly for speeding up the editing process because they are going to be much easier to play back than the high quality versions of those same clips. If you want to use this function though, you need to actually have proxies to work with and there are a few ways that you can set those up. One of them would be if your camera has the option to record proxies internally, and then you would just link those to the footage in Resolve. The other option is to import your original footage first and then highlight it, right click and go to generate proxy media. After you have them set up, you can start turning them on and off when you need to. And again, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can go to this icon above the preview monitor and click on prefer proxies to turn them on or disable all proxies to turn them off. You can do the same thing by going up to the playback menu on the top and then proxy handling. But again, you probably noticed that I've set up these two options as keybinds to kind of speed up the process even more without having to go into any menus. To do it, you go to your keyboard customization again and search for proxy handling. Again, there's only one drop down menu and you can set up whichever keys you want in there. Now, as long as you actually have proxies to work with, you can turn them on anytime when playback is starting to get slow and you can use them in combination with the last thing that I talked about with the timeline proxy resolution. Just keep in mind that before you start color grading, you need to make sure that your proxies are off because you want to be looking at the original highest quality clip to make sure that you've got the most amount of information to work with. And then when you're done grading, you can turn them on again if you need to. And when you go to export, Resolve is automatically going to use the high quality original clips. The next one is something that's more for convenience than anything, and it's being able to export the current frame in your preview monitor as a still. You could do it by going up to File, then Export, and Export Current Frame as Still, but I prefer just using a keybind and saving myself a few clicks. To bind it for yourself, you can look for Current Frame as Still in your keyboard customization. It's going to be under File and then the Export dropdown. This function was actually added kind of recently to Resolve, and it used to be a little bit more annoying to do before, but ever since they put this in, I've been using it a ton. And it's especially useful for when I want to grab a quick frame for like a YouTube thumbnail, or if I want to quickly show how something is going to a client. It might not be a big deal for a lot of you, but I find it pretty useful, so I thought I'd share it. The next one is the one that I said is insanely useful at the start, especially for those moments when you just want to experiment with something in your edit. Sometimes I want to try out a bunch of different things for a video, like swapping around the order of clips, trying different titles and motion graphics, or changing settings in the inspector. 
But then depending on how much I've actually done, if I end up not liking it and I want to go back, I either have to click Ctrl Z a bunch of times or I have to start double tapping the undo button on my speed editor to get back to a point that I'm happy with. But instead of doing that, I can just open up the history window. And this is essentially a little panel that shows you a history of almost all of the actions that you've done so far on some of the pages in Resolve. So instead of having to undo everything you need to one by one, you can just click the last action that you were sure about and you can just keep working from there. And it's almost like having different save points in a video game. If you want to set this up for yourself, look for open history window in your keyboard customization. I've set mine to B because I don't use it for anything else, but you can set it up however you like. Now, this should give you a lot more freedom to just like jump around different points of your edit a lot more easily without having to undo 20 things one by one every time. Just keep in mind that this doesn't work in the fusion and color pages, or at least I don't think so, unless I've set up something wrong, in which case feel free to let me know in the comments. This next one is kind of a convenience thing that helps you stay organized, but it is also something that can help you with smoother playback. Whenever I'm working on a video, if I layer B-roll and motion graphics or anything else over my A-roll, I sometimes don't even see the A-roll clip under them at all. But when the playhead gets to those sections, Resolve still tries to render out all of the clips during playback and I can start dropping a lot of frames. And that's why I use a function called enable clip, which ironically enough actually lets me disable those clips that have something from a higher track entirely covering them. That way Resolve only looks at whatever is on the top track and plays that back, but it still leaves everything in place in case I decide that I want to enable it again later. And in my experience, this does help with making things run smoother. If you're using the default Resolve keybinds, that's going to be on the D key, but for me personally, it was way too easy to hit it randomly whenever I was doing something else, so I decided to change it. In your keyboard customization, you want to look for Enable Clip. There's going to be three separate lines that you can change the key binding for, but if you just change it for the line under the Clip dropdown, it's going to change it for the other ones as well. After that, when you set up your big and complicated editing timeline, whenever you notice that a clip won't be seen anyways because there's just like a bunch of stuff above it, you can disable it so that Resolve doesn't struggle to try to play it back for no reason. So that's all I have for you in this one. Feel free to let me know what you thought of all of these and if there's like a specific one that you think is going to be the most useful in your editing workflow. Also, if there are any other cool functions that you think I should set up as keybinds, feel free to let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for sticking around until the end, and I'll see you in the next one.